Which I know that's not the outcome you wanted. Before getting into game-specific questions, I guess, what do you say to your team when you're down more than 10 points and you call that full timeout? Just what's the message to them to, to kind of close the game out? The one that was around seven minutes or later that in the fourth? Was, there was only a minute left and you called a full timeout, that one. I mean, I called one at seven or around there because I felt like we were panicking a little bit and seven minutes was more than enough time. Um, the last one, I mean, you're just grasping for straws. So um, at the end of the day, we didn't have it shooting-wise. I thought we had good looks. We missed. And, uh, and the layup thing started happening again in the fourth quarter. So, um, But you look at this sheet, you can't win against a team like that shooting 32%. 23 from three, like, and then get absolutely your ass is handed to you on the glass. So kudos to them. They've been the best team all year. Let's be real. Um, you know, we needed a, we needed back to back really great games um, because their sense of urgency was going to be different. You know, so. Um, I think their their group earned it. They earned it all year. Um, maybe just a follow up to that. Obviously, you said that, you know their group earned it all year, but you know your group, like you said, kind of fought through a lot of adversity. And mm -hmm. you talked about giving each other grace. Is mm -hmm. that kind of what the gist of the post game locker room conversation was like? Yeah, I mean we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of hard learning lessons. I mean, it hurts now. I promise you, it's gonna hurt tomorrow probably worse because it sets in um, the next day, but. You, you got to build habits and you got to work in a way that you believe you deserve to win. That you've been, you believe you deserve to win. And, you know, at the end of the day, I thought, you know, our, our shortcomings stood out a little bit. Um, and we have some great things to build on. You don't have it every year. It's not the way this works. You don't get to flip a switch. It's the beautiful thing about sports, actually. The work and the commitment and the buy-in and the play hard and the want to and the will will always show up in the end. And um, like I said, New York's had really great will and determination this whole year. We talked a lot of smack last year. I'm sure they heard it, and they got to smack us this year. So um, for us... We will have a long off season. And for us, we will be back next year. And I'm sure the focus level will be very different. I can pretty much guarantee that. Becky, kind of going off that point, how do you think you're going to look back on this season? Is it obviously Feng Shui Championship is, is that the primary thing that stands out or is there positive? No, I mean, yeah, there's absolutely positives. First of all, I love that group of women. I do. I care about them. I care about getting the best out of them. I care about when they're hurting. I care about them when they're great. I care about them when they're not great. Um, so is there learning in the losses? Of course, there better be. There better be or you don't get to grow. And, you know, I'm really proud of this group because even, you know, my coaching staff and everything, like, We've, we've changed the way this league plays. And that's something that our team can be, like, proud of. You know, sped it out. We sped it up and spaced it out. Um, and now everybody's, you know, I think it's been great for our game. Um, you're seeing a lot of really great individual, like, not only team, but just great individual performances. I mean, Fee had a hell of a year. Asia obviously was Asia and was – out in another universe this year. But you really had a lot of other people, um, Stewie, so, I mean, the, it's a fun way to play, I think. Um, I think it's entertaining to watch. Um, and you know, that that core four in our group that we brought in, like they, they started that. And um, you know, this team w was put together to take us out, and they did. 
Thank you. From an organizational standpoint, what do you think needs to be done in the, in the off season? Um, ask me that in a week. I'm still reeling about this game. I haven't sat there and said, gone through what we've never done exit meetings. We've done exit partying. So <laughs> we're going to have to get together, um, figure it out. But I mean, obviously, we, we, we have to get better. We have to really take a, a sharp look at ourselves, look ourselves in the mirror, see our shortcomings, and then, you know, you got to make the moves necessary, whatever that means, to put the best product that we possibly can. It's not going to be the same group probably next year. It just won't. And I'm sad about that because I really like that group. They were a pain in my ass, but I was a pain in their ass, too. <laughs> and I like that group. You know, I love that group. Um, I, I guess a lot of it, what, what, what hurts now, too, is just with Asia, uh, you know, having the season that she did. Um, Becky, Jackie goes one of ten. Chelsea goes three of eight. Um, what, did it just feel like, God, this has been what's plagued us all season? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing, and I, and I try to sell this to them, you know, but you take a team like Minnesota and you have good talent. You have an excellent team. And... We had excellent talent and had a good team. And at the end of the day, you know, this game rewards your habits. It rewards the hard work. It rewards the selflessness required in a team sport to, to be able to win. Um, and what I've always tried to convey to this group, you know, specifically with our, with our guards, Right, um, Chels, Kels, and, and Jack, you know, their success is so intertwined with each other's. Their individual greatness comes from them being great together. And a little bit of iron sharpens iron. And, um, you know, you take Minnesota, you know, last year, those three are flirting with 40, 50, 90. I mean, they didn't miss very much and we just didn't shoot the ball well this year and I guess when you go back and look um, it's like yeah we changed the way the league plays a little bit with the, the spacing and then the the lot of threes the high volume threes this and that and then it kind of hit us back in the face because we're still taking the threes but now we're missing and everybody else is making <laughs> so um, but that, that four that that core four and you could put AC in there. She's been with us a couple of years, Sid, Kia, um, even KB. Like, that group loves KB. This year didn't actually probably work out the way she wanted it to. She got injured early and kind of got behind the eight ball. Um, you know, like I said, I you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's a lot of good things that we can build on. And at the end of the day, I choose that locker room every time. I choose those those women every time, and I'm I'm proud to be their coach. Two final questions. We got a follow up from Callie, and then Matthias in the back. I just wanted to circle back to something you said about talking a lot of trash last year. And uh, Stewie kind of alluded to. Can we to not that. circle back on it? Well, I'm. Just I think curious. it's circling well enough right now. <laughs> Do you, but is there anything you want to address about maybe anything you said or like what you heard the team said that you feel like needs to be addressed or was maybe? No, I mean we talked our crap. They heard it, and they get to talk their crap. It's part of the game. It's not like personal. I can talk crap all I want. At the end of the day, I have mad respect for A, Sandy. Sandy coached me. Me and Sandy go way back. Saab, Stewie, I have mad respect for those players. There's no doubt about it. Um, it may seem like I have something, but it's like, of course, I'm always going to ride with Asia, so it may be seems. I think Stewie is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um you know, and Saab, like I told you all, 
I don't know who's voting for second, third, or when that stuff comes out. But like, if you're watching and paying attention, she she's she's the key. She's the key. And you know, Stewie's gonna go down as one of the greatest of all time. And Sot will too. Um, and my group of guards will too. I mean, you really have a really unique situation where you have a really bunch of brilliant basketball players competing at the highest level, kind of like in ways all in their prime still. Um, it's a really unique situation. And then you have this younger influx of of the rookies, and you got Juju coming out, and you got the Hill Doggo kid from the Notre Dame. Like it's good. Is women's basketball is a lot of fun right now. I'm just going back to the game very quickly in the second Thank half. you. Thank God. <laughs> um, just going back to the second half, it felt like there was a little bit of a hitch in the half court. It felt like a little bit of catch and hold. Um, how much of that did you feel was self-inflicted versus anything New York did defensively? It was both. At the end of the day, you don't give another team control over what you do. You got to dictate action. You got to impose your will. They're not going to do it. They're not just going to let you go where you want to go. You got to make it happen. And um, quite honestly, I mean, there was definitely some lulls where I thought the ball was popping. And then there were some lulls where I felt like we passed up shots. I'm like, what now? Nobody wants to shoot. And we started overpassing. So it's just one of those things. At the end of the day, whether we overpassed or underpassed, we had really good looks and missed. And... They did it, and the layup thing still irks me in the fourth quarter, especially. You can't, you can't, you can't give up layups. Good? 